Hi folks, Ben Fontanelles here, on location at the Irvington Back EMS Training Center. I recently received a request from an EMT in Cobleskill asking me to demonstrate the proper technique for managing a patient with a tibia fibula fracture. So, let's do it! So, in order to perform this skill correctly, you're going to need some equipment. What I have here today are two long padded board splints and five cravats. You're also going to need a helper to give you a hand with this skill. So I brought one of my co-instructors, Brandon, to give me a hand. Right now, Brandon is holding stabilization of the injured leg. And you can see the injury clearly marked by the piece of medical tape I placed on the leg. So let's get started. With my cravats, oh my god, what is that? Is that a wrinkle? Oh my god, that's a wrinkle. Who wrinkled my cravat? What the did you do this? Why are my cravats wrinkled? Did you wrinkle my cravat? Did you do this? Benny, I think it's pronounced cravat. I work and I slave all day at this training center and all I ask for are wrinkle-free cravats. Wrinkle-free cravats. Is that too much to ask for? I'm freaking believe. All right, I'm ready to immobilize the leg. I took the liberty of checking the patient's distal perfusion and motor and sensory response, which are all intact presently. Now, I'm going to take my cravats and position them under the patient's leg. And I'm gonna use the natural voids in the patient's legs to accomplish this. So I'm gonna start off by taking three cravats And using the void you can find beneath the knee, I'm going to carefully slide the cravats under the patient's leg. I'm going to take two cravats and position them above the knee. And then I'm going to take one cravat and position it below the knee, but above the fracture site. Now I'm going to take another cravat and I'm going to use the natural void below the ankle to position it properly. And finally, I'm going to take my fifth cravat and place it at the heel of the patient. Now it's time for the long padded board splints. I'm going to take my long padded board splints and I'm going to put them padding side to the patient's leg on either side of the leg. And my partner Brandon is now going to maintain stabilization using the padded board splints. All right, now I'm going to tie off my cravats. Now I'm going to start with the two cravats that are directly above and below the injury site. Now I'm going to make sure that I tie my knots against the board and not the patient's leg. So I'm going to bring my cravats towards me and I'm going to make a knot using a surgeon's knot technique. And then I'm going to follow through with an overhand knot. Next, I'm going to tie the two cravats that are above the patient's knee using the same technique. Starting with a surgeon's knot and finishing with an overhand knot. Now remember the goal here is to immobilize the joint above and below the fracture site. So in this case, the two joints that we're concerned about is the knee and the ankle. So in order to accomplish immobilizing the ankle, I'm going to use an ankle hitch, which is my fifth cravat. In order to do this, I'm going to take my cravat, and I'm going to loop it around under the patient's foot, go over the patient's foot, and come back down below the patient's foot.
All right, once I'm satisfied that the patient's leg is completely immobilized, last but not least, I'm gonna check for distal perfusion and motor and sensory response to make sure that I haven't hurt the patient at all by doing this technique. Thank you for watching, and if you have any skills you would like us to perform here at IVAC for you and get recorded and put up on our Facebook page or our website, just reach out to me, send me an email, criticalcaring at gmail.com or leave me a message on our Facebook page. As always, stay tuned and keep learning.